Good evening, everyone. We started our meeting this evening with an executive session, so we've already opened up the meeting, so we're going to move into the Board of Education spotlight, and tonight we have a bunch of student athletes here um, who've competed in the state championship and Superintendent Thompson and Athletic Director Chris Camp Leader are going to hear and honor all the students. And we just want to say that we thank you for all the hard work that you have put in, and we congratulate you in doing such a nice job representing Bonsall Central School District. Superintendent Thompson? Thank you, everyone. The Board of Education would like to recognize and honor the following C.W. Baker High School student athletes for competing in the New York State Public High School Athletic Association State Championships during the spring season. The certificate, certificate of Excellence will be presented to the boys and girls lacrosse teams who both won the Class A Championships. Members of the boys outdoor track and field team, boys golf team, and boys tennis teams will also be honored. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is, the, the lacrosse teams were outstanding um, and extremely special to have two in, in one season is, 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 is spectacular. And we sincerely congratulate all of you, and as well as the other athletes that are being recognized with boys outdoor track, field team, uh, golf, and tennis. So we're extremely, extremely proud of you, and uh, very, very excited. So congratulations, thank you. Mr. Campolita? Do you, do you want me to, do I have to stay at a microphone, or can I do it? Uh, if you could do it in the microphone, Chris, please, that way uh, folks at home can, can hear it. Thank you. Do you want a board member to pass out the certificates as he's reading them? All right. All right, I guess we'll do this. I did, uh, for the boys lacrosse team, I did give it to Coach. So that goes, that's the girls. Uh, first, we'd like to recognize boys lacrosse team who finished the 2022 season with a 19-1 record. The team won the district's first boys lacrosse Class A championship on June 11th, beating Northport 10-7. As I call your name, please come forward to be recognized. Zachariah Azedadine, Nicholas Carey, Mason Clark, Caden Cox, Jacob Chiz, Colin Doyle, Carson Dial, Judson Ferris, Nicholas Foster, Reese Gilmore, Jameson Guyp, Aiden Green, Ryan Hollenbeck, Leo Johnson, Carter Little, Keegan Lynch, Tucker Magnick, Gregory, Gregory Marinelli, Austin McClintock, Anthony Minicelli, Anthony Nicolucci, Thomas Nachewski, Trey Ordway, Patrick Otz, Braden Penefeather Stevenson, Christian Petragani, Ryan Quinn, Vincent Samurai, Zachary Sorrow, Cole Schuyler, Garrett Sutton, Will Weekly, Dylan Wertheim, and a special thanks to Coach Wilcox, Coach Lamb, Coach Borkowski. Coach Borkowski who came off to help tonight, and Coach Wertheim. We'll take pictures of the players now.
Congratulations, Dave Lacoste. Now, I know some of you may be looking at the numbers here. Um, this is pretty cool news that we found out this late this last weekend. The returning players of the boys lacrosse team uh, will meet the New Jersey state champion Mountain Lakes at 7 p.m. Thursday, which will be televised on ESPNU. The contest is part of the National High School Lacrosse Showcase in Columbia, Maryland. So we do wish the gentlemen best of luck with that and coaches as well. Next, we will honor the girls lacrosse team who finished their season with an 18-2 record and earned their second Class A title on June 11th by beating Northport 15-9. As I call your name, please come forward to be recognized. Maeve Bartell, Carly Desmond, Rachel Ferris, Ava Graham, Emma Hollenbeck, Grace Hollenbeck, Sydney Hotella, Sarah Hunter, Sophia Ayano, Alinda Medicelli, Isabella Merbido, Sophia Muscolino, Sierra Natoli, Michaela Nevel, Myra Nicholson, Brianna Peters, Juliana Petragani, Mia Posey. Cassidy Primrose, Caitlin Sacco, Samantha Tangway, and Alexa Zala. A special thanks to Coach Tabor and Coach Boyle, your 2022 Class A Girls State Champions. Congratulations, ladies. Six members of the Boys Outdoor Track and Field members participated in the 2022 New York State Public High School Athletic Association Outdoor Track and Field Championships on June 11th at CNS High School. As I call your name, please come forward to be recognized. State champion, pentathlon first place, Owen Weaver. <laughs> Sam Mellinger, 100 meters, fifth place, 200 meters, fourth place. <laughs> Solomon Holden Betts, 3,000 meter steeplechase, third place. Third place. <laughs> Logan Hayes, Jack McAllister, Jeffrey Raganes, uh, Solomon Holden Betts, 4x800 relay, place seventh. <laughs> A special thanks to Coach Spicer, Coach Skidari, and Coach Gallagher. Congratulations, gentlemen. Congratulations again. Now I do know our, our golf member and coach would not be able to make it tonight, but I do want to recognize Aiden Farmer and Coach Al. Aiden competed in the 2022 State Championship Golf Championship in June at Mark Twain Golf Course and placed 49th overall. We'll make sure to get him his envelope. Congratulations, Aiden. Three members of the boys tennis team competed in the state championship on June 2nd and 3rd at Flushing Meadow. As I call your name, please come forward to be recognized. 
Antonio Marcello comp complete, competed in singles. Nicholas Lichardello and Max Finicello competed in doubles. <laughs> A special thanks to Coach Mason. Congratulations, gentlemen. And we have a second um, part of uh, our Board of Education Spotlight. We have some outgoing board members um, who are leaving us, and this is their last regular Board of Education meeting. And we have some of the New York State School Board Association to recognize one of our board members who's been working with us for 41 years. Um, Mr. Thompson has some um, things to go over first before we do that. So our outgoing board members for this year, uh, uh, Mr. Brian Dingle, his service years from uh, July 2019 to June 2022, Board of Education Vice President from July 2021 to June 2022. Board committees included audit, diversity and equity and inclusion, as well as facilities. Our next board member that will be leaving us is Denise Falso. Her service years were July 2019 to June 2022. Board committees included communications, health insurance, and policy. Our next uh, board member that'll be leaving us this year is Kaylee Evans, student ex officio, uh, student board member, years of service, July 2021 to June 2022. And last but certainly not least, Mrs. Joan Reeves. Service years, May 1981 to June 2022. Board of Education President, July 1998 to June 2003. July 2014 to June 2015. And July 2019 to June 2020. She also served as a Board Education Vice President, July 1988 to June 1998, July 2011 to June 2014, July 2018 to June 2019. Board committees, probably every single one, and I say that with honor and respect, served on numerous committees during her 40 year career, most recently audit, diversity, equity, inclusion, facilities, health insurance, and policy. And she was also the Everett R. Dyer Award uh, recipient in 2015. So congratulations to all of our outgoing board members. You will, you will be missed. And at this time, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Bob Berry, come on up, please. Uh, first off, uh, good evening. My name is Barry Entwistle. I'm the Director of Member Relations at the New York State School Boards Association. And on behalf of our Executive Director, Robert Schneider, and our Board President, uh, Peggy Zugabee, and your Area 4 Director, uh, Sandy Rufo, uh, we would like to congratulate the outgoing board members of the Baldwinsville Central School District. Um, when we were uh, approached about this meeting uh, this evening, and we heard that Joan uh, was leaving board service. I have known Joan for a number of years. Uh, the average school board member in New York State serves about two terms, a little over six years statewide. Um, and when we were sort of looking back on Joan's history, uh, we have very few board members that serve 41 years. 
uh, for a school district. That is really monumental. And you all know uh, the time uh, that it takes to serve on a Board of Education, uh, the commitment and uh, the passion that you each bring to this position. Uh, no secret, the last two years have been unprecedented uh, for many of our boards across the state of New York, um, but they keep coming to the table because they really feel good uh, about the work that they do. And I get an opportunity to travel throughout the state and the presentation here this evening uh, with your student athletes was exceptional. Uh, it's always great to start off a board meeting with good news. And uh, I know that you're very proud of these young men and women, um, but I also was a board member for 15 years in Central New York. And when you sit around the table and you watch students get recognized, uh, it's a great feeling. Uh, not an easy job, uh, and we do commend you for all the work that you do. Uh, but we did want to take this opportunity uh, to provide a special recognition uh, to Joan. And I, I can only imagine what it feels like sitting uh, at your last board meeting after uh, 41 years of service, certainly probably many uh, mixed emotions. Um, but uh, Joan, as uh, Superintendent Thompson uh, was reading in the biography, was also our distinguished uh, school Board Service Award recipient in uh, 2015, and that's one of the highest awards you can uh, receive from the New York State School Boards Association. So we just wanted to uh, thank Joan for her 41 years of leadership and service to the students of the Baldwinsville Central School District. Um, and we are really, really uh, sad to see Joan go. I know that we will continue to see her in other educational uh, capacities, but when you think of Baldwinsville Central School District, uh, Joan's name always comes up. And I know for the 16 years I've been with the New York State School Boards Association, uh, Joan and I have crossed paths uh, many times. Um, she really has always put 100% into this job. Uh, I don't think there was a professional development program that I did not see her at. Uh, she was there and she also contributed um, to uh, many of our programs. So we just wanted to give a special recognition to you, Joan, um, for your remarkable service. And uh, we are uh, certainly happy for you, you know, and we will continue to see you at other events. So I wanted just to give you this particular award.
I just want to say um, a few things. Um, first, I want to thank our outgoing board members for the time that they have volunteered to enhance the educational experience of our students. Um, your different areas of expertise and experiences, your willingness to advocate for all students on various issues and the time you took away from your own families to help the school community has benefited many students now and going into the future. Um, I personally want to thank all of you for the support you've given me. This has been a challenging time as a board leader um, with everything that's happened in education the last two years. Um, I want to thank you for taking my quick phone calls and my not so quick phone calls sometimes as I tried to learn about your perspectives on different issues and to help myself grow so I can become a better board member. I'm Brian, <laughs> you probably won't miss the call that begins like this. Brian, something's come up. What's your initial thought? Let's figure this out. Um, you've been incredibly flexible and supportive and responsive of things that popped up and decisions that need to be made, especially regarding communications to the team and the best way to handle it. Um, as we know, good communications is a key and we've worked well together. Um, Joan, you probably won't miss the marathon phone calls or maybe will, I don't know, but I'm somehow doubting it. Um, have a quick question, turn into two hours sometimes, but I appreciate the knowledge that you've had and the experiences that you've um, been able to share with me Usually a phone call started like this. Joan, have you ever experienced this before? And the answer is usually yes. Um, what am I missing though was the history so I can better understand. And I definitely appreciated all of those things. And Denise, sharing your perspective um, as a teacher, especially during this challenging time for everyone in education, um, through the pandemic was very eye-opening and appreciated your graciousness of taking every phone call, especially the ones where we brainstormed ideas were my favorite um, as we thought about potentially different ways to provide new opportunities for our students. I appreciate your forward thinking and being able to tap into your training and expertise in education and experiences, and especially the ones um, that you shared about a family immigrating from another country and having the belief that anything's impossible for our students. And Kaylee, <laughs> Um, thank you for providing the student report, and I especially enjoyed it as it got more expansive as more opportunities were available to our students again. Um, being respectful and even differing opinions is important in all versus being heard, and I think the most um, memorable moment for me was your recognition of this, about respectful um, behaviors in public and reminding everyone, and this is a strength and the courage that you showed that evening, and you're gonna do a lot of good things in life. Um, you are the reason why all of us sit around this board table all the time and why we're working not just here but outside preparing and doing everything we can for your education. And I just wanna wish you good luck as you move on and continue exploring and seeing and finding new opportunities out there. I don't know if any of other colleagues have anything that they'd like to say, but I just want to say that this team has worked really hard this year through a lot of challenging things, and thank you. I just want to say a few words. Um, Kelly, best of luck to you. Um, it's been a great year. It's a both on for the first time, and seeing um, what happens at the high school um, through your eyes and reporting, um, it's been great. Thank you, and best of luck to you. Brian, you were one of the first ones who called me to congratulate me last year and um, let me know that you were always there if I had questions, and that was really appreciated. Thank you. Joan, I love the history and the talks, and I keep on saying, you know, come back as a historian, um, but um, thank you for all of your insight and, you know, first time questions. Um, I really appreciate all the insight you provided me, and um, uh, I know you're going to continue on in education in many other ways. <laughs> and Denise, the same goes to you tenfold questions, texts. You're always there to um, lend the ear and say, You've got this, don't be afraid to ask questions. And I certainly won't, and I've learned a great deal from you this year. Thank you. I just, I just want to thank all of you for your services, Kaylee. It's been, it's been really great to have. That perspective and I think sometimes that when we lose our center and it happens it, it's it's been incredible to have you kind of bring us back to center 
uh, and, and that's something that's going to be with you for the rest of your life and, and it's going to it's going to serve not you it's going to serve everybody that you come in contact with so they should be thankful for that you have it and it's something that's going to serve everybody uh, joan thank you for all your dedication Denise, thank you for all your dedication. Brian, thank you for all your dedication. Um, you know, I could go on and on about the, the things I've learned from Joan, the things I've learned from Denise, the things I've learned from Brian. You know, we got one of the things that's hardest for somebody from my background to learn is when to be quiet. I'll be honest about that. Um, you, you know, Brian, your your quiet leadership sometimes has has really has driven me to say, take a step back. And figure out when's the right time to, to speak. Um, so I, I really do appreciate that. Joan, your knowledge, not just because of your experience, which obviously adds to your knowledge, but your actual knowledge because of the work you have done, it, it pushes me to, to go harder and to go more to, and to give more. And, and that's not always easy, as, as all of us know that you know we, we give a lot of time to this. So I appreciate that, Denise. Uh, every you know, you and I share a similar background in our, in our heritage and our history. Uh, and watching you bring that to the table, along with your career, along with that that education background, giving me the knowledge when I would have questions and say, I don't know, can you even say? <laughs> I really am going to miss that, and I appreciate that. Uh, thank you all for everything you've done, and we'll continue. I think it's all mostly been said, so thank you uh, more so for the camaraderie, and I think we uh, we had our challenges coming in as a, as a board together, but I think we ended up in a very strong spot, and Kaylee, I think your, uh, your presence and, and participation and the perspective that we got to see through your eyes was, uh, was really welcomed, especially coming back into the classroom every day. Uh, hearing about the challenges that you deal with uh, and, and the rest of the students deal with, I think is um, uh, for, for the student body to have trust in you to be put into this position is, is amazing. And, and you know, Tony said it best, which is, you know, people should be coming to you now for advice, so you have that, hold your, your head up high and, and really use that as a way to continue to launch your, uh, your educational career at the next level and wherever life takes you. So um, it's, what you've done takes an enormous amount of courage, and it's something you should always be proud of. So, and thanks to my and Joan, um, I'm going to have to find somebody else to uh, to to come out of executive session and adjourn with. So, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll miss that. So, thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Moving on to the next part of the agenda is the Correspondence Board Activities and Committee Reports. On June 8th, we had a Board of Education superintendent, superintendent visit to Van Buren Elementary School. It was a daytime visit. Does anyone have anything you'd like to share about that? I think it was, uh, hopefully, it wasn't coincidence because it was perfect timing. We got to enjoy the uh, Wax Museum New York history, so that was a kind of a nice add-on to that, and then uh, had some time to look at the building afterwards. And, you know, many of us have been in there in off times, but it was nice to see it at capacity and all the learning going on. So it was uh, overall a great day, great visit. I was able to attend as well, and um, it was seeing fourth graders with the wax museum and having it outdoors and having. Uh, fifth graders also be able to be present at it because they weren't able to have that opportunity last year it was very nice. Um, and then I also um, enjoyed since the, the homeschool for my children, the new addition that was put on in the office that provided a different entryway system um, and a larger office space for uh, Mrs. Cronin and her staff. Um, they've really utilized the space uh, nicely. I appreciate the opportunity. Also on June 8th, there was a joint PTA officers meeting. There, there wasn't. Oh, there wasn't. Okay. On Monday, June 13th, we had a special board of education meeting and a retreat. On 
for the Board of Education portion of that, the regular special meeting that was for the evaluation of a Superintendent Thompson. It was a very positive meeting and we look forward to continuing our work with him. And then we also had a team review. Um, we used our new Super Eval um, systems, the first team review I think we've done um, since I've been on the board um, to this extent. And we found some areas of strengths and areas of weaknesses and we look forward to discussing those areas we can improve upon when we um, start in July. And then on Friday, June 24th, we had an amazing graduation ceremony. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people who could speak to that because it was phenomenal. I, I would agree with that. The graduation, um, for me, it was a special one because my son was graduating and I, I can't even put words behind it. it. It was a really good feeling to be able to be up there to give him his diploma. Um, but the, the, the entire ceremony itself, uh, the principal didn't put on was outstanding. Just like he did last year, everything went well, everything was perfect. The fireworks at the end, once again, stole the show. <laughs> but, but it was a really good night. It was a really good night, and I enjoyed it. I had the opportunity to attend, and it was pretty amazing. Um, down to uh, Rick with all of your staff in organizing the event, and all the volunteers from the district, and then just seeing all the kids and their their personalities as they walked across the stage. It was it was a great opportunity. Um, and of course, um, the three students who who spoke, the class president and the salutatorian. Um, Valedictorian. It was just. It was really a great time to come together and see, especially us as board members, all the work that we do. And the result was last Friday night, and those kids getting across the stage and uh, meeting all their goals and accomplishments. So it was a great, um, great event. And the fireworks, of course, were very nice at the end. Yeah, I'll, I'll just add the feedback I've gotten from you know many community members on much they love having graduation at the stadium and a few of us have kids walking that stage next year so the pressure's on to have absolutely perfect weather three years in a row uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed but hopefully we can pull it off again next year it was great i get i get give credit to the staff room because they do a stellar job putting on um that graduation um and i like the fact that the kids really have fun and enjoy it because it's their day. Um, but they, they do just an awesome job and it's really, really nice to have it in the stadium now. It was phenomenal, every little detail. It was a lot of work from Jason's entire team and incredibly memorable. Um, right up to the fireworks and thank you from Kiwanis Club for that donation as well. Um, I think, you know, look, not think, just sitting there looking out at all of them, I truly felt that we were family, our family, and there was like a lot of love and pride um, of what these students accomplished, especially um, with the end of their high school career and Baker going through the unprecedented times. They're just a phenomenal group of students who I believe will be incredibly successful as they move on from here. Um, prior to tonight's regular board of ed meeting, we had a health insurance committee meeting. Yeah, we um, talked about the dental rates because it's the only thing that we're self-insured with anymore and they're going to stay flat because that's on the agenda tonight. Um, we also talked, um, there's really not a need for a health insurance committee. We did that when we were self-insured or beginning to be self-insured. Um, and right now, uh, we're with the consortium, so all it is is the dental, and the dental does not fluctuate much at all. So we just thought that's one committee that the board really doesn't need anymore. Okay, thank you. Um, does anyone have any other events or anything they want to share that they've attended since the last board of that meeting? I attended the track and field event at the stadium, um, and mostly it was fifth graders, but there were some schools that had fourth and fifth graders present. It was a fantastic event. Um, the kids had a blast, and I've heard um, positive things from everyone in the community that was there present. So great job to everybody that put that on, to staff members and um, the teachers and Chris. 
So great job. I would I would like to give a special shout out to the <clears throat> chemistry teachers in the uh, high school, Mrs. Rodriguez being one of them. Um, I know a lot of they had a lot of students had review sessions, but I thought they went a little above and beyond. They had a little cookout, provided food to encourage students to come, and and they held a you know quite a long review session after that. So you know a lot of our teachers are working hard, and I just wanted to call that one out special because I think they went up a little above and beyond to get those kids ready for that test. So, and luckily for them, it's all over now. Our loan upcoming event, summertime, uh, we have our next regular Board of Education meeting and our reorg meeting um, on July 11th. Okay, next up is Kaylee's final student board report. Uh, I'll keep it brief. <laughs> uh, Obviously, graduation was this past Friday at the stadium. Uh, Baker's concert band played before the ceremony began, and then the chamber choir performed both at the beginning and the end of the ceremony. This was an incredible experience and a perfect send-off for the class of 2022. As the year wraps up, our spring sports teams and marching band have done incredibly well this season and continue to. Um, as today's my last meeting, I'll introduce the new student student board member, Zahn Ashcraft. <laughs> um, who will be the student representative for the 2022-2023 school year. Um, I wish you all good luck in the upcoming school years and I'd like to thank you all for giving me this opportunity and letting me represent the student body this year. Thank you, Kaylee. Next up on the agenda is request to speak. Are there any speakers tonight? Okay. Moving on to the consent agenda. Resolve that the Board of Education approve the consent agenda pursuant to attached. Can I have a motion, please? Second. Jeff first, Joan second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 9 0. Next up on the agenda is the leadership report. So, Superintendent Thompson will let us know what's next. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I certainly need to acknowledge uh, everybody who uh, made graduation extremely successful. It takes an awful lot of work and a lot of man hours and women hours and uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's certainly not an easy task and to have it all come together in harmony is, is a beautiful thing and, and uh, extremely proud of, of being a part of my first graduation here. So I want to say thank you to everyone. And also, I would like to give a specific shout out to Paula Pickrain. Now, Paula was the one who put together the YouTube video of our graduation. If you haven't had an opportunity to, to take a peek at it, it's, it's really fabulous. And uh, again, she did an incredible amount of work and uh, we're very proud of that. So thank you to, to Paula Pickrain. Next up, we have our SRO presentation. David, uh, you wanna have our SROs come up, please? So we have Andrea Napoli from the Vivo PD and a Katie Kruger uh, as Onondaga County Deputy. Hi there. Hi. So we didn't necessarily prepare anything specific. Um, I know that you guys have received our statistics and information from um, this past year. Uh, in general, we still continue to see mental health concerns amongst our students that are, are still pretty prevalent. Um, so, you know, we have great support staff at their schools that are daily working with the students that are, that are in crisis. Um, one of the other things that Officer Natoli mentioned to me earlier was cell phones continue to be an issue, not necessarily usage in school, but a lot of social media stuff is trickling in. Um, so that's something that I think we all, all three of us get involved with. Um, to try and you know, keep keep those issues that are outside issues outside of school, and when they do trickle in, you know, working with the administration to help settle those issues before they escalate in the schools. Mm -hmm. I, don't I don't know if you guys have any questions. Yeah. 
question specifically? I just have a question about your statistics. Is, is there anything, and I've reviewed the statistics, is there anything that jumps out at you that's just a, an anomaly or different from a statistics point of view this year than the previous several years? So I, I look at the numbers you see, you know, it looks like February is kind of a big month for counseling sessions and things <laughs> like that. Looks like September is a big month for those types of sessions too, which makes sense. We're coming back to school after summer, we're coming back to school after break. Uh, has, have you seen any of these statistics uh, kind of differ from year to year? Is there anything that jumps out that, you know, geez, this month was unlike any other month that we've had in a while? Is there anything that along those lines or are these kind of consistent with what's been happening over the last several years? Um, the best you can speak to that. Yeah, I mean, as, aside from last year, which yeah. is kind of a write-off, I think that anytime there's any of, those, any of those major transitions, so the startup of school, the, you know, the week leading up to a break, tends to be a time when those kids that really don't have a good supportive home life are going to start to spiral and are going to be needier and are going to be seeking out attention from you know the support staff or the SRO or you know or or acting out so there's going to be maybe a higher rate of, of things and then the adjustment back to school after after they've come back from maybe a not so great break um, I think they're fairly common and that's what I would expect um, Thank you for, I, I'm sorry, she only didn't mean to cut you off. Can you cut me off? <laughs> Thank oh. you for pointing that out. Are you hanging your light on? So, you know, again, I'm still learning that quiet leadership thing here. So, uh, <laughs> Thank you for pointing out, though, that, you know, the, the weeks leading up that some of the students who may not have the, the support system, like you said, might be reaching out more. Uh, and, and thank you for recognizing that. And, I had a quick question um, on the statistics. The, the first line item in the three are called weapons, and I know that's a pretty sensitive subject right now, but like of the, I think it's 19 total, like what are the nature, of, what, what's considered a weapon in that case? So what we consider a weapon is um, any like pocket knife, um, any um, like one, I think we had like a crowbar, like a little handmade crowbar. So anything that could be used as a weapon or that was intended that they were carrying it for safety or a weapon, um, those kinds of things. So it was mostly, I can tell you, most of those were like little pocket knives that kids had that either, you know, they forgot that they had it in their bag over the weekend or that, you know, kids that go hunting with their parents, they take that same bag and then they forget and then it gets found or somebody reports it and then that's how we ended up finding it. So a lot of them were. So one of the things I, I just wanted to ask about, um, so I think the kids are getting used to having your presence, right, over the many years. So the potential um, confrontation stopped or avoided by SROs. Can you talk a little bit about that and if it has something to do with like connections with kids or um, hearing about those from other students? Sure, I mean, in, in my experience, it might be just walking down the hallway and seeing two kids that are getting heated with each other, if there doesn't happen to be an administrator right there, I'm going to I'm going to step in and, and separate or pull one of the kids away and, and start chatting with them. Usually the teachers are great if they see me do that, they're gonna grab the other kid, someone's gonna call an administrator if I'm not able to. Um, so there's circumstances like that. Sometimes it's um, students seeking us out. Deputy Kruger, I'm having a problem. I, you know, this is what's gonna happen. I'm mad at this person, I, I need to, need to get me out of the hallway and then we do that and then if it's beyond my scope I, I'm gonna find the appropriate person maybe they work with our um, you know one of our counseling staff so I'm gonna call them see if they're free to take that student in I'm not always the best person but I'll at least stand in until we can get them to you know the support staff that can maybe better help them if they're struggling with, with whatever issue they're having and I will say for me the eighth graders this year or my first year of kids at Van Buren when I was first established there full time, so it was nice to see them. And a lot of them did seek me out just because they knew me from Van Buren. So it was pretty cool to see them as eighth graders instead of elementary kids, but um, those definite like relationships that we build with them do actually come full circle and they're huge with helping us with them actually being able to talk to somebody that they know. So. Uh, 
Yeah. No. <laughs> so, you know, I, I see this, uh, and I mention that kind of year after year, is that the, the amount of time that you spend in the counseling sessions. So it's, it's you see your, your role in, in your job in terms of, um, I want to help the kids learn how to behave. So teaching them appropriate ways to deal with emotions and things like that. So, you know, I appreciate you taking that point, that standpoint and, and really trying to help them, you know, be good citizens and that kind of thing. So, so I appreciate what you do there. Thank you. Thank you both for what you do. Um, and also our other SRO who's not here tonight. Um, I just had a quick question about um, when it indicates the number of counseling sessions with teachers or administrators and or students and parents. Are those like, um, they come to you, you go to them, they come to your office or your room or the location where you're at? just like, kind of like, a, like you were describing in chat, you try to break up something. Can you be a little bit more specific, like what those sessions are? Yeah, so for our stats, we did any session that wasn't just a hi, how are you, how's your day going? Anything where if a student needed to come vent to us or if they had a problem and they wanted us to come find help for them, to seek help in the proper places, anything that we went above and beyond just a normal, how's your day going um, interaction. I, I think it's the same with the um, staff or the parents. If we're uh, present for a phone call with a with a principal, we're going to count that because we're there in an official capacity, not just passing through and saying hi to the parent. Um, same thing with you know consulting with the principals. If they're informing us of an ongoing issue with a student, that's another like official consultation we would count. And the other question was um, requested traffic details. Is that for traffic at, at buildings? You're asked to go to different buildings or what, what's that? Well, for instance, at Ray, traffic is not part of my daily responsibility. It's, it's, a, it's more of a safety issue. So often we had um, Officer Nord come in. So the times when he was absent and they were asking me to fill in for him, things like that, or um, some of the, I still have my three elementary schools. If they're asking me to come over and manage traffic for an event during the school day, I would count that as a specific request, traffic. And we did have traffic issues with parents complaining about the stop signs coming into campus. So a lot of those days where that took up our morning, we weren't necessarily in the building right at school time because we were watching the stop signs for, you know, kids being crossing. Um, we had a couple that the student crosswalk um, onto Baker campus. Parents were concerned because it, it dark, they, some kids may not be seen. So we sat there um, for a couple weeks um, first thing in the morning to make sure that the kids were getting across the crosswalk safe. So those are all we counted for those. Um, and it's great to hear um, you, Andrea, say that it's kind of come full circle for you, for your the current or the previous eighth graders yeah. um, to see that connection and to have you have that connection with the kids, and hopefully that will um, that will just um, continue um, for, for both of you. Yeah. For all pretty three amazing. Of you. Yes. Thank you for what you do. No questions for me. Just a sincere thank you for what you're doing. So appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Next up is capital project update. Kim, Rick. We've talked a lot about capital projects over the last year, so um, I just thought I'd kind of go through a quick summary of where we are. We'll start out with the capital outlay projects so the, that are the 100K projects that we put in our budget brochure each year and in our general fund. So this past year we did the pool bleachers and the wall. We've talked a lot about that. We're wrapping that up right now. Next year we'll be looking at the Reynolds PA system and some site work over there to try to separate out the bus traffic from the car traffic. Um, in, in addition to that, we did have a small amount of funds left over from this project when we built the transportation building. So this summer we'll be redoing the tech floors up at, at Baker and some of the doors up there as well. And we hope to have that completed prior to school starting in the fall. Last year, May 2021, we had a small capital project that was approved by our voters for 3.8 million. And that touches a number of our buildings. The work at Durgy was, um, shifted to ensure that the capital project work will be supported by this project that we're doing this summer. Uh, Ray, we're looking at some sanitary services um, out that way, some upgrades, McNamara, similar sanitary piping, 
and we were able to purchase the, the piece of land, thank you to the voters, so that we can again separate out the bus traffic from the parent traffic. So that hasn't gone in yet because we needed to make sure we purchased the property yet. So we ended up having to phase that project out in addition to the fact that the Palmer Sanitary Main, we're hoping to move that building off from a septic system once the um, project goes through that the town of Lake Sanders is working on with the developers. So that will be a few years out, but we do have that approval from our voters, so we will hold on to those dollars until we're able to do that work. And in addition to the traffic and bus loop rentals, we'll also be looking at some unit ventilators inside with this project. So some of the projects that we have going on at rentals are going to be crossed over multiple funds, If you had, if, just to kind of summarize that. And then, of course, we have the Big Dirty project that we just had our first kickoff meeting with the teachers. It was very exciting for the, the architects to be able to start that design. So that work is beginning and we'll be meeting over the summer. And we will continue to provide updates on the website as they become available for that project. And I think we did a lot of work with the board in regards to the capital project planning and what our next project will be looking like. So the facilities committee, once the uh, committee is Created at our REARG meeting, we will hit the ground running and uh, really start focusing on that next project vote that I think we're trying to have happen in May of 2023. And what we've been talking about up to this point includes some work at Baker, some work at Ray, and some site work here on the main campus. A couple other things that will be coming up is the building conditions survey, which we will be working on at once we hit January 2023. We are a little bit of ahead of that schedule and trying to make sure that we're looking at the traffic study, particularly for the main campus, to try to alleviate some of the stop sign issues we just heard about and some of that traffic flow with parents coming in. Um, the other thing we talked to the facilities committee about that we've started kind of generating some ideas to move forward with the facilities committee is uh, kind of some guiding principles similar to what we have for the audit committee for reserves and how we want to see our reserves funded. Um, we kind of talked about having some guiding principles for facilities in regards to maximizing aid, um, kind of what our focus is. So we will be sharing that with the facilities committee for input probably at one of the first meetings, just so we have something to fall back on and trying to summarize. Capital projects are very complex. Trying to summarize um, in a document for board members to kind of look at what does it mean when we're talking about maximum cost allowance? What does it mean when we're looking at our debt service? You know, how many square feet in, our, or in each building? Um, just kind of some things like that that we can really focus back on when we are um, trying to put a lot of pieces together to kind of help us go in the, the, the direction that we need to go in for the future. Rick, do you have anything? <laughs> I kind of figured. We actually worked on this document together. Rick just voted that I was the spokesperson. Yeah, we're going to be busy. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you all set? Next up, Joe, please. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> so at our next uh, board meeting, there will be the tax uh, on uh, on for second reading and approval. This is for the English 9 uh, course, the uh, feature of the Legends course that was created as a graphic novel, and it is a choice text. I don't know that any board member picked up a, a copy of the book, but if you have questions, you can certainly try to answer them. Okay, thank you. All right, moving on to the next part of the agenda, the new business. Resolved that the Board of Education approved the textbook adoption of the Eye of Minds by James Dashner to be used in the grade nine ELA classes at Durkee Junior High School pursuant to the attached. Can I have a motion, please? Oh. Joan first. Second. Second, Jeff. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 9 0. Next item, resolve that the Board of Education approve the Baldwin Central School District Policy Series 1003000 revised review pursuant to attached. Can I have a motion, please? Both. Second. Joan first, Shelley second. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 9 0. Item C, approval of the Baldwin Central, resolve that the Board of Education approve the Baldwin Central School District Safety Plan pursuant to the attached. Can I have a motion, please? Both. Joan first. 
Second, Brian, any questions or discussion? I, I just have one comment. I think it's important to, uh, there may be questions or concerns about the new legislation um, in terms of, I think the list is a lot of that. Um, to acknowledge that New York State School Boards is actively working with the state to get clarification on some of the details of that. So um, they're doing that for all the school districts in the state, so that's actively being worked on. And we certainly have a number of things in place already. I mean, not that we share everything openly all of the time about what we have in our buildings, but we do have a number of things that are in our buildings and we are um, in regular meetings with our contractors to see what other items we, we should be implementing. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0, item D, resolved that the Board of Education approved the rental agreement between the Baltimore Central School District and the YMCA commencing on July 1st, 2022 and terminating on August 31st, 2022, pursuant to the attached. Can I have a motion, please? Tony first. Second, Brian. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0. Item E, resolved that the Board of Education approve the contract agreement between the Baldwinsville Central School District and the Board of Trustees of the Village of Baldwinsville for the School Resource Officer Services from July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023, pursuant to the attached. Can I have a motion, please? Frank first. Second. Second, Matt. Any questions or discussion? So just to clarify, this is adding one more from one more SRO? No. No? Okay. No, this is just the annual contract that we bring forward. I think there was something in the weekly letter a few weeks ago. Yeah. We should have the sheriff agreement as well. However, we're still waiting for that from the county. But what happened last year is these need to go into the district safety plan. And we were really late being able to update that. So at least we can bring the Baldwinsville current one in. And then once we get the sheriffs, we'll update that as well. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0. Item F, resolved the Board of Education approved the contract agreement between the Baldwinsville Central School District Coordinated Care Services Incorporated for Promise Zone Engagement Specialist from August 1st, 2021 to June 30th, 2022, pursuant to the attached. Can I have a motion, please? Mm. Joan first. Second. Second, Jeff. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0. Item G, resolved that the Board of Education approved the professional services agreement between the Baltimore Central School District and Children's Therapy Network for professional services from July 1, 2022 through June 30, 2023, pursuant to the attached. Can I have a motion, please? So, Shelly first. Second. Who said it first? Second, Jeff. Any questions or discussion? You guys are challenging me today. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0, item H, resolved with the Board of Education approved the 2022-2023 Board of Education District Goals pursuant to the attached. Can I have a motion, please? Move. Shelly first. Second, Brian. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0, item I, resolved with the Board of Education approved the resolution of the New York State School Board Association, NYSSBA, Area 4 Director, Ms. Sandra Rufo for 2022-2023 nomination pursuant to the attached. Can I have a motion, please? Move. Joan first. Second. Second, Matt. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0. Item J, resolved that the Board of Education approve a secret resolution for the band storage building pursuant to the attached. Can I have a motion, please? Move. Joan first. Second, Brian, any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0. Item K, resolved the Board of Education approve the Health and Welfare Services Agreement and costs for the Syracuse City School District and East Syracuse Manoa School District pursuant to attached. Can I have a motion, please? Jeff first. Second. Second, Shelly. Shelly second. 
Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Passes 9-0. Item L, resolve that the Board of Education approve the disposal of surplus equipment and instructional materials pursuant to attached. Can I have a motion, please? Move. Joan first. Second. Second, Jeff. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0. Item M, result of the Board of Education approve a 0% increase to the dental plan premium for the rate for the Bonsville Central School District for the 2022-2023 school year. Can I have a motion, please? Who said it first? Matt first. Second, Brian. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Passes 9-0. Thank you, Brian. Item N, result of the Board of Education acknowledge and certify the reapproval applications for career and technical education endorsement in the areas of family and consumer sciences, culinary arts for Charles W. Baker High School's family consumer science programming pursuant to attached. Can I have a motion, please? Joan first. Second. Second, Shelley. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0. Item O, Result of the Board of Education approved the Baltimore Central School District's Comprehensive Improvement Plan, DCIP, pursuant to attached. Can I have a motion, please? Move. Joan first. Second, Brian. Any questions or discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0. We now move on to the board round table portion of the meeting. Does anyone have anything that they would like to discuss? I, I just want to thank all the staff, teachers, administration for a, a, what I think has been a very successful year. Thank you for all that you've done and continue to do and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I had an item from that we started discussing last board meeting about the proposal for a uh, new committee to consider that I kind of named, it doesn't have to be named, it's just a future opportunities committee, um, more of a high level exploratory idea at the onset to help with our um, responsibilities of board members to help bridge um, the community to the school district and kind of focusing on different opportunities and ideas to, provide different out of the box type of ideas our students may not have had up to this point. But keeping it very broad um, to see what ideas are generated by bringing in more community members, especially businesses and parents and you know, many different stakeholders. Just want to know if anyone had an opportunity to think about that over the last three weeks. I'll kick it off, get us started. Um, I did have an opportunity to think about it. In fact, I'm, uh, I'm taking part in the uh, Syracuse Surge uh, Workforce Redevelopment Program that gets kicked off tomorrow. And you know, looking at it from a, a, a local employer's perspective, which I happen to represent, um, you know, there are things that are getting started in uh, in the area that I think, if if our students were given an opportunity to look at some opportunities a little bit sooner rather than later, I think that would help uh, help accomplish a number of things. I think it would make our our, uh, our kids want to stay in the area, number one, because there's more opportunities that are um, that sometimes are hard to uncover. Um, and secondly, I think uh, being a leader in that in that space to to kind of think about how education is changing and the, the numbers of opportunities that are there. I'm not sure, our, and I'm not in the school buildings every day, and I'd love to hear your, your opinion, Kaylee, on, on this. If, if, if there's enough exposure um, of, uh, of the non-traditional uh, future paths, whether it's outside of college and into the trades or other, or other opportunities, I think, I think we should we should challenge ourselves to, to think outside the box a little bit, and I think um, I think we owe it to our to our students and, and, and families in general just to, to provide as many uh, any out, outreach opportunities or bring different members of the community in to, to showcase some of the ideas that are there. I, to me, I think whenever there's a committee like this or an opportunity like this to talk about what's going on here locally, I think it's you know 
yes, it's a time commitment for some board members and, and staff to, to participate, but I also think it's uh, uh, the outcomes, I think, could be pretty powerful for our, our students. Um, yeah, I agree with Frank. There's a lot of things, good things going on in the in the area. Um, in, in my new role, I tell you, I'm working with uh, a lot of advanced manufacturing companies and um, finding their needs so that we can adjust uh, what we're offering. But I think you know, one of the big things I'm hearing from them is getting uh, students in or potential employees in sooner. Um, in fact, starting with high school you know, level, but getting their interest before then, because they're, everybody's hurting and you know, for, for people and they're trying to find ways. So I think there's a lot of opportunities where we can engage with, most of my efforts are in Cayuga and Oswego County, but I, think, I don't think the county lines change the story at all. But um, to that point, I think, you know, as I requested last time we talked about this, I would like to hear you know, from from the superintendent and what the district is thinking about doing and is there a need for does this can this complement what you guys are looking to do and how can we make it so that you know we're complementing what you guys are trying to do or and, you know, do you see a need for this and how can this fit in and I, I think that uh, anytime we have a conversation about opportunities it's a it's a positive thing and you know I need to touch base with with Tony and Renee and Joe and our guidance team to see what we, we were currently doing and how could it could a committee like this or uh, could could that fortify what we're already doing uh, again I, I i don't ever feel that conversation is a bad thing you know we we, we may not know what we don't know uh, so i you know I, I think it would be a positive for sure i i just um i i i agree with frank and i agree with jeff um, the only reservation I, I, I would just, first place it should be a district committee, um, is, is my feeling with the charge, but at the same time, Jason doesn't know a lot of the players yet. I think it's very important he get out there and know a lot of the players, he needs to, or both he needs to um, connect with, um, you know, CNY, SBA, and Mac. we have a partnership, he needs to see what's available. Um, I, I'm not, you know, if you do it, you want to do it right um, to get the best out of it. Um, and that, you know, like I said, he's, he's new. Um, and he's got he's to figure out what the guidance, and you've got to get the guidance department to buy into this um, at, at the same time, because the career days that they've had for kids got to start as low as you can start them. You know, you can't wait until actually junior high or high school. You have to start some of those career days sooner so they at least get a taste of what's out there. Because that's what, there's a lot of jobs in this area right now. Um, and it's and it's sad, it doesn't need a college degree to take a lot of these jobs. And I think Jeff's right to get them right in the businesses as apprentices. And that's what mackney has been doing. And they've been doing it with the city of Syracuse. And I think we need to reach out because even when they give a report to CNY SBA, they're advertising those opportunities. They have them. But I think districts outside the city gotta start taking advantage of that. Um, but I, I think like Jason you have to let Jason get a handle on it. A handle on what they're doing now, but also meeting the players that are in this area right now. The uh, businesses, I mean he's he's in Rotary and probably a chamber. Um, some others, you, you know, I think you need to, you know, get out there and put it together as a district committee. I think there are a lot of opportunities out there, and I think we need to jump on them because I, it always, it always would irritate me when I see the city of Syracuse and these kids getting all these degrees and these opportunities or whatever, and how come we're not? And I, I, I challenge all you guys to do whatever you can to lobby for BOCES A for that STEAM school when it's built. That's so important for kids. And Joan, that it was certainly a challenge, you know, that if that was one area that I didn't really hit upon, you know, in the first year, was really getting out and meeting all of the players, as you will, or as you said. Um, you know, COVID was certainly a challenge, and uh, that that's gonna be one of my missions for the summer is, is to reach out to 
local businesses, greater business, greater surrounding area businesses, um, and, and start having these conversations. So, um, yeah, thank you. So, um, as I was thinking about this, um, I think Jason, you said this. Any time that we can provide opportunities for kids, that's that's a, a positive. Um, and I was thinking about all the other board committees that we have, and what is its purpose, right? So, what's the goal of it? And I think a lot of times it's wonderful to have it as a board committee because the communication piece definitely happens at this level um, and you're able to communicate what's happening to the community and the public so that they are in the know. Um, I think it would be a fantastic idea to get community members involved, having students um, see what's out there, mentorships, there's so many pathways. And I know, Joan, you're speaking of BOCES, which is fantastic. So BOCES has wonderful programs. Um, but when I was thinking about this, I think of things that are, you know, maybe there are some students that this could create different opportunities for, where they may not find something at BOCES that fits their needs. Um, so I'm in favor of, of having that type of um, committee. You know, if you all like look into it and see, you know, what could come of that. Again, I think it's about opportunities for kids and if, if that, committee can do that and communicate that, um, I don't see any any negative to it. I, I support the, um, the recommendation or looking further into it, um, especially if we can start earlier in the earlier grades um, and also giving back to the community. There's a lot of people in the sports table who have all different areas that we bring unique perception to or of, and um, what we could do getting community members, teachers, guidance counselors, students, of course, it's always the students. Um, and my hope is that, um, yes, there's BOCES, which is, I don't even know the half of what BOCES does, but I know they do great things. Um, but even if it's like a six to eight week type I don't say intern, but like a work study program, whoever it may be that um, you know the, the relationship is with, just so kids get an idea of what is out there, but they're not spending the entire year or half a year in a program that they thought they were really, excuse me, gun haul or interested in. Just think it opens many more opportunities for um, for, for for all the students. Um, so I, I support it. Um, and I hope so, um, that we'll be able to to get off the ground if, if, um, if that's the way it needs to go. I, I'm not really sure. If, when I say BOCES aid for the STEAM school, you guys keep saying talking just about BOCES. I'm not. <clears throat> the STEAM school, when it's built, 60% are supposed to be city kids, 40% are supposed to be outside the county. Kids cannot afford to go there unless they have BOCES aid to go to the STEAM school, which Frank knows the opportunities are endless at that STEAM school. Um, and this that's the opportunity for internships, apprenticeships, just, it's phenomenal. The money that, that they've even gotten donated from corporations for the STEAM school, it's, um, you want the kids to have that opportunity and they're not going to if you don't get it aidable somehow through BOCES. We won't be able to afford it. So it's not a, say, BOCES program, but it's a, it, the state has funded all this money through to develop that STEAM school. Frank, Frank toured it. It's, it's not a BOCES program, but you, if you lobby for it, which they were supposed to do when the legislation came out, and get BOCES aid on it, we can send our kids there. And, and it's a terrific opportunity for kids. Otherwise, we're going to lose it. That's why I'm encouraging you to lobby for that aid. It's it, it's it may be BOCES A, but it's not a BOCES program. John, thanks for the clarification because I, I was not aware of that. Thank you for stating um, that. And with the discussion tonight, I heard a lot about you know BOCES and STEAM, but we have to remember that there's other opportunities and careers out there that aren't just in that particular area. And I think that's the whole idea of developing a committee 
like just to find out what opportunities there are and not specifically in just the trades or technology or STEAM related things. We don't know what we don't know and I think that's part of it. Not only do our students not know what types of careers may be out there, opportunities, like when I thought I wanted to be a physical therapist initially, you know, sometimes I wonder where I've stayed on that track if I knew with my love for children they actually could work in schools. I didn't know that back in the day. It wasn't easy to get that information in the non-tech, showing my age, where that information is right at the fingertips. Um, you know, we don't know what we don't know. And I think just starting those conversations and, you know, I heard, you know, internships, I've heard like real, um, opportunities for kids, but it may be as simple as who wants to help um, provide different opportunities for our kids. And it may be as simple as what businesses or career people would like to just spend a day in a classroom doing a presentation. It's simple like that. Just starting to build those bridges with people right in our own community for who be able to give up like an afternoon or an hour lunch period. And I know that they do that, I think, at Derby, um, or at least they used to before the pandemic, those lunch the careers um, people come in but just some ideas and things to consider because it's not just technology and trades it's a lot of things but I know the trades are hurting badly because my husband is a part of that could can we request um, presentation or just some materials about um, what we are offering right now through through guidance and maybe Tony and Renee can Give us an overview of what's there, just so we can kind of. It's not, you know, throughout the course of the year, we've learned. First year board member, we just learned a lot, um, and now it's some of it's sunk in, others it's it's lost forever. But if we can, um, if we can just get a sense of what's being offered, just as a uh, as a baseline, that'd be fantastic. Certainly, thank you. And I, I expand a little on that request, to maybe as I said before, where are you guys headed? What's your vision for? Because you know. I think consensus around the table is this is a, you know, there's a great idea of getting, you know, <laughs> what's offered in the area, getting kids opportunities. I think it's just maybe the mechanism that, you know, how can we best support you? Does this idea of a board committee, is that fit in and how would it? Or is, it, is there other ways the board can support you that might be more effective or it might be you know, something more complimentary? So I'd just like to hear from you and Tony and Renee about what do we have, where are we headed, and what can we do to maximize that? Because um, you guys may be, and I'll just make this up, you guys may already be doing this stuff that we're talking about. So is a board committee really needed? And you know, maybe there's some other ways we can support you better. So that's, that's all, I'd just like to hear that kind of vision before we kind of commit to it. Yes, sir. Thank you, John. There are even more partnering with your educational institutions than we're doing now. So we are doing, as part of the strategic planning uh, committee, I'm putting a survey out next year to see what the students and teachers and community sees. Um, so we're going to get a lot of good information from that. But you know, do we want to start from that, or do we want to start building, you know, a network to be able to immediately start going? Because it just doesn't happen overnight building these connections. It's all about developing relationships and they do take time. And you know, a lot of companies don't have like one sole decision maker. It's like they go back to a team and see what type of opportunities they can provide, what types of time they can um, give up, you know, I shouldn't say give up because that sounds negative, but you know, provide the schools um, what types of resources they may be able to have. So it's just kind of getting the pieces in place so when we have that information, we have a pool to pull from. And you know, the longer we wait, you know, two, three, four years go by. You know, when are we going to be able to help these students sooner? Especially um, with everything that's going on, the world has absolutely changed, and education is changing very quickly. Sounds like the uh, the idea in the abstract is pretty good. You need to provide a scope, description, membership would be the next step. So some of us can think about that. Maybe that's something we could present, you know, early into the next school year to consider. Just another way that we can contribute to the education of our kids and find more so we can give more so they're better prepared. 
Okay, um, does anyone have anything else? Because I really want to end um, on a positive because this has been a very challenging year. I'm sorry, what? Oh, sure. Okay, Brian has requested that he go next. Brian, we didn't communicate. You just, we're ending like this? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't know where, to, where I wanted to uh, actually say this. Uh, um, but, but on the way out the door, I, I think that the Baltimore School District is, the education you get here is, in my opinion, top of the line. In Central New York, it is top of the line, the best district. That is my opinion here, and that will never change. But when I ran for the board, I think everybody has a, uh, a reason for running. Everybody has an agenda, whatever they want to do when they get there. The reason why I ran was because of some racial incidents that my children had gone through in the district. I have two who graduated from here. Uh, COVID came in and it kind of stopped progress on the different things that we were trying to work on. Um, what I would do is ask my colleagues, you have to work on it. There are problems here. It's not perfect. There are things that have happened this year that are out there. And, and it's tough to go to school to learn when you're worried about the other things that can happen to you. So I think that it's, it's important to, I don't know the direction. I don't know exactly what should be done. I, I don't. But something has to be done because there, there's kids going to school here who are scared on a daily basis on what can happen to them, when it can happen to them. And I think that it's a, it's a shame if we don't try to figure out a way to help everybody out. And that's it. We have to work on it. And I think Jen, I was just gonna say something before you start. Um, so I just wanted to say um, the past three years have been a, you know, a wonderful experience for me. Um, I'm glad I had this opportunity. Um, I never in a million years thought that we would be going through a pandemic, teaching through that, and then um, being a board member. So um, that was incredibly surprising, um, a superintendent search. You know, so kind of like everything that could have happened, happened during these three years. Um, so I just wanted to say, Jason, um, it's been a pleasure working with you. Um, and I'm very excited to see the opportunities that you bring to our district and to our students. Um, so I, I hope that you're afforded that opportunity to do so. And I'm excited to see um, what the future holds. Um, and I do want to say that you know, something that the SRO has said tonight, um, you know, about how social media um, kind of spurs events and kind of, you know, happens outside of school and then you see it kind of trickle in to school. Um, you know, that's not only children, but there's adults, you know, that, that do that. And I really hope going forward that um, people are mindful of that. And, and mindful of being respectful and making sure that they understand what they put out on social media is there forever. Um, you know, and, and just being mindful and thinking about, you know, your actions before that happens. Um, and then lastly, and I know Shelly, you said this earlier, I just wanna leave saying um, to my board colleagues, always ask questions. Um, there have been many many instances that I can use an example, but um, you know, you, you may feel nervous to ask questions, you may not, you may not, you know, feel comfortable doing it, but do it because the whole purpose is kids. You know, that's why we're all here sitting around the table is it's for our students and making sure that they have wonderful opportunities in this district. Um, so always ask questions. Um, and I think I saw him earlier, but I think he left. But I don't know if anybody's talked to Jim about um, the, the next capital project, which is so, so amazing. Um, but I think questions helped kind of look at different perspectives with the capital project. And we're getting everything that everyone originally wanted plus some, you know, and that pool, the, the, the classrooms and, and gym. So just always ask questions. Um, and I appreciate everybody's support and I wish you all luck. Thank you.
Thank you. You know, you're all probably thinking I'm going to say something profound, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> so I'm just going to say stay student focused. Look at the big picture. Don't individualize what you're doing, and it's not about egos or anything else. Remember, keep politics out of it and student focus, because that was that's the biggest challenge a lot of times with education is keeping politics out of it and just being able to focus on kids. Um, this is a stellar district, and everywhere I go, they're always turn to me and they say, "So what does Beville do?" Because whatever we do, they want to do. So let's let's keep up our stellar reputation and, and uh, move forward and just keep focusing on what's best for our kids. And that, like Jason says, that all means all, just like Brian said. Um, because there's still too much going on that needs to get better. Um, we are, because I took the class, same class as you did and had discussions with different districts, we are so far ahead. Even, but we still need a lot of work to be done. So, and I, I think it probably will happen. So, um, have a good time, guys. See ya, I already had my bonfire, so. <laughs> I just want to say that we started this year as very challenging. Um, we were onboarding three new board members. Um, our new superintendent was just starting. Um, we we're still worried about opening up the schools and doing it properly and getting last minute um, guidance from the state. And we're also dealing with a lot of the things happening across the nation, um, coming right here to our boardroom and trying to navigate all those challenges while we're all a fairly a very young board um, with not a lot of years um, on the board, you know, we're young. <laughs> but, <I> mean, <laughs> um, and it was a challenge. We had a lot of um, education, a lot of research to do on our own. Um, we took advantage of a lot of the opportunities that NISBA gave us, especially um, that wonderful presentation that you guys gave regarding the curriculum. Because um, that was, we had a lot to learn here and understand where our role is. And I'm looking at Barry from NISBA, who's still with us right now. And we definitely appreciated that because it helped generate conversations and have us relook at our policies. And we're still working on it, trying to figure that out. But we thank you for that guidance. Um, at times, we lose sight of the good things because it has been a very challenging bunch of years, a lot of pressure, especially on board members um, with the pandemic. But even prior to the pandemic, um, going to all the professional development workshops that were available. There's more and more that's being placed on boards of education. I think that's what a lot of people don't understand. They just see us sitting here every two weeks, having some quick discussions, saying yay, nay, vote, and um, moving on. But there is a lot of work that's put in behind the scenes and preparations for the meetings and all the um, professional development that's attended to share that information so we can make the best decisions for our students. Um, but I just want to, you know, I was sitting thinking about all of the positive things and things that we have been able to change this year as a board through um, using our board roundtable and being incredibly transparent and having some of those tough conversations um, that never really happened my first two years on the board. I think we've done a really good job with that. But it started off with um, giving up a lot of our summer, not to make you feel bad, Superintendent Thompson, but going through that search during the summer um, was a huge commitment. Um, so much so that you know Denise joined us virtually um, from her vacation, her time to get away with her family and her children, um, and that just shows her dedication and commitment to hiring um, the best person possible um, to lead our district. Um, a capital project, um, you need to make some adjustments. There was a lot of work that was put in beforehand, but as Denise just stated, because we had those conversations, we're actually gonna end up getting more and keeping that tax impact incredibly low for our community members. Um, we worked on a lot of policies and regulations. Um, Superintendent Thompson was wonderful reaching out. This was the first time since I've been on the board of the policy committee where we actually had to develop a policy from scratch. Um, my experience has just been reviewing but that was a lot of work of researching on the internet, getting um, some information from your colleagues in from the superintendents um, to help us with that. Um, we went through a lot of um, pressure to not have public comment. I think that we held strong with that. We will continue to have that at our board meetings. Um, that's very important, um, hearing both sides um, and getting a real feel for where some of the people are in our community. 
but I think our actions at the board meetings and decisions we make um, speak as a whole as to where we actually are on some things. Uh, we took the RMS survey for the staff from last year and we utilized that this year, at least in the policy committee, one of the things of feedback was teachers and staff want to be more involved in the policy, the discussions for policy development. We found ways as a committee to bring those people into particular areas of policies that we're working on. Um, we've decided to have committee meetings recorded to increase not only our transparency to the community, but to help each of us who aren't at those meetings so we're not missing information and sometimes going back and rehearing things to make sure we heard what we thought we heard is incredibly important for moving forward. Um, we brought building tours back during the school day, which was incredibly important um, for a lot of reasons, but specifically for the capital project. But it also, you know, reminded us during some very difficult times why we do what we do and seeing the smiles on the kids' faces and all the incredible things our teachers are doing in the schools. Um, we in started using Super Eval to not only um, work with Superintendent Thompson, and we thank you for encouraging us to look into that, um, but also our first board self-evaluation as well, and we're going to use that to springboard us into how we can improve and function better um, in, with our stakeholders. Um, we have a lot of professional, professional development opportunities um, to help us improve, which I mentioned some of those, especially in the area of curriculum. And also this district staff um, putting together that budget and all those different proposal propositions well, took a lot of time, a lot of thought. Um, we were they did incredible presentations and we were able to present that to the community and everything passed overwhelmingly, which just shows you the um, dedication and support that we have from our community to help our students become the best students and have the best opportunities to become well-rounded students, individuals and preparing them for their futures. So I would say we're ending this school year on a very positive note, and we've done very, very well as a team to learn from each other and help each other through incredibly challenging times. So the moment everyone's been waiting for. Executive session. Uh, next item resolved that the Board of Education entered the executive session to discuss the employment history of a particular person or corporation or the medical, financial, or credit history of a particular person or corporation or matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation and matters of student discipline or a specific student placement and or program or that would otherwise disclose confidential, personally identifiable student information. Can I have a motion, please? Frank first, second, Denise, Matt's giving the thumb. <laughs> um, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes 9-0. So we're taking about five minutes and going to the exact session.